Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a follow on from last week's literature review video, which was all about doing the search for a literature review in terms of getting those keywords and deciding your research questions. Today, however, we're going to be using our search terms in order to do the actual search in PubMed. So this will depend on whatever database is most suitable to you. My research area sort of blends sports science with computer science. So I use PubMed, I use Google Scholar, and I use ResearchGate a bit, but not really for searching, more so for looking up different kinds of papers that I'm specifically searching for. I'd say a good place to start would be ask your supervisor what a good database for your research area would be, because just there will be slight differences between each database in terms of how to actually do those searches. So today we're going to be talking a bit more about your search strategy, meaning how to actually use your keywords and complete your search. So your search strategy is basically all of the different tools you use for your search. So last week we talked about using Pico, Spider and coming up with your actual keywords and alternative spellings, alternative words, similar words and all of that. Today we're using those to actually search for papers with those keywords. So here we are on the PubMed website. So I'm just going to start off with a very basic keyword search, running injuries. And you can see to start off, we end up with five and a half thousand different papers, which is just too many. So there are a couple of different ways that we can narrow down our search based like by confining our search terms. So previously, we've come up with all of our keywords and some alternative options for our keywords as well. So now what we're going to do is basically put some constraints onto the database here so that we get what we are looking for. So I'm going to go into advanced and what we would have had here the first time, our history is there and you can see that we have our five and a half thousand um, options. So the first way that we can constrain our database is by using Boolean operators. So Boolean operators are basically true or false operators where we have and, or, and not. So you can see this down the side here with these different options. So by using these, we can essentially narrow down our search term by only including exactly what we want. So I want running, um, but then I could say I want running or runner or marathoner. So that's something that we would have come up with these alternative options before. So let's say I have all of those. And then I also, I then want on top of that injury. So you can see up here, it's building this term for us. I've got running or runner or marathoner and injury. And there's also the not option. So for me, that's not super relevant, but if you were doing something, let's say something to do with some form of medical trial where you only wanted to include one type of population. So let's say I'm gonna say not sprinter. I don't think that's going to really affect anything, but it's just so that I can only have marathoners and not sprinters, let's say. So rather than going through the search again, I'm just going to add this to my history and it will kind of automatically do this search. So yes, now I've ended up with actually even more search terms. And that's because if you'll see, we actually didn't narrow down anything from our last query, but that's just to mention that, you know, you have this option. So if you want to if you had a medical trial where you wanted to only include adults, you could have children in the search terms and then specifically not adults. So that's the first kind of thing we have to work with is these and, or, and not operators. The second thing that we have to work with is phrases. So if you want to look for a specific phrase, then you're going to put that phrase into quotes. Um, so I'm going to look for running related injury. Um, so that now in quotes means it's only going to search for that specific phrase. And then let's say here, I also want to have or or I, because that's another common 
term for running related injury is the acronym version. So again, we talked about this in the keywords terms video that, you know, you have to come up with these alternate options just so that you're not going to be excluding things in your search. So let's add this one to my history and see what that returns. So that returns significantly less. So we've got specifically running related injuries. It could be possible that there is some a lot being excluded because of this now. So that's just one thing. If you want to look for things for a specific phrase that you really want included in the paper, then you can use this phrase um, option. The next option that we have is truncation. So that's basically where we want to include any variant of a given word. And again, we did talk about this a bit in the last video, but like, let's say if I wanted to say something to do with computers, but I could have computation or computing, then I would use the stem compute with just the T at the end. And then all of those other words that I mentioned previously are going to be included. So for example, let's say I want to have run, any form of running, runners, running, um, so anything like that, and also injure star. So that means I can have injury, injuries, injuring, anything at all. So let's add this one to my search history. Okay, so again, around 4,000. So this will have anything to do with runners and anything to do with injuries. Okay, so that's another option is truncation. And that means you're going to be making sure that you include all of these possibilities. So the next thing that we can also do then is to refine our search by something in this part here. So if you're looking for a specific author, if you're looking for a specific date, but as well, what we mainly use this for, if you want to make sure that your search terms come up in the title or abstract, you can do that here. So let's say I want to go back to um, run star and injure star, but I want them both to appear in the title or abstract. Then doing that, we see we have like 7,000 results. So you know, it does depend a lot on um, like what kind of search terms you use. You can see here, like it varies a lot depending on what you do. So I'm just showing you examples, but in your actual search, you would be using a ton of these different things to make sure that you're ruling out all of the possibilities that you want to rule out and including all of the things that you want to include. And it should eventually get down to like a nice kind of narrow search. Um, so... That's another option is to refine it by title or abstract. And then another option as well is to obviously you can refine it by date if you just want to have more recent articles. So then just to show again from the advanced place, let's say we do our search looking for running related injury. Perfect. And then let's do our search. Let's imagine I've got all the keywords that I want. We've gotten our search down to a nice clean number. So we're down to 105 on this, interestingly enough. So then let us create a cert, create a alert for this. And this way we can sign in, create an alert, and we'll actually get notified when there's a new paper. So that's the last thing you might want to do. So guys, that is it for this video. I really hope it was helpful in some way. I'm still pretty new to doing the literature review, so I'm not any kind of expert. If I left something out, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have any resources to share with anyone, again, put them in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more PhD related content. Next week's writing related video is going to be about paragraph structure and how to create a well-written paragraph, essentially. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.